In this video, we're going to talk about discrete probability distributions. So we're still studying probability, but we're focused on a particular type of distribution. To understand this, let's first remember that when we conduct an experiment, we are creating a random variable. If you roll a die, for example, uh, you don't know what the outcome is going to be but you know that there are a set of possibilities. It's one, two, three, four, five, or six. Random variables represent a possible numerical value from an experiment. Okay. They can be discrete. They can be continuous. Discrete random variables are always countable. For example, if I'm studying the distribution of children across U.S. households, I might create discrete random variables. I might look at how many households have zero children, how many households have one child, how many households have two children, so on and so forth. Whereas if I'm studying the distribution of income across U.S. households, I might create intervals to represent my random variable. I might say how many households make less than $50,000 how many households make more than $50,000? Or even more specific, I might say, how many households make between zero and 50,000? How many households make more than 50,000 but less than 100,000? How many households make more than 100,000 but less than 150,000? That type of thing. Here's some other examples to help you delineate between the two. But generally speaking, if you're dealing with weights, temperatures, time, then using intervals to represent your data is going to be more practical than discrete points. Okay, in this section, we're focused specifically on discrete random variables. And we're going to learn how to illustrate discrete random variables in a probability distribution like this. And we're going to learn how to calculate the various probabilities of those discrete random variables occurring. Later on in the course, we'll do the same thing with continuous random variables. We begin with a probability distribution function. This is a representation of the probabilities all possible outcomes x can take. We abbreviate the probabilities x can take with this. And we know that the probabilities that any x value can take must be greater than or equal to zero. And we know that the sum of those probabilities must equal one. Example, let's say we toss two coins and we define x as the number of heads. By tossing two coins, there are essentially four possible outcomes. You could have two tails, you could have tail heads, heads tails, or you could have two heads. This is from previous uh, lessons, the sample space, right? Because these are all possible outcomes that can occur from the experiment of tossing two coins. Now, with this information, we can determine a probability distribution for the number of heads. What is the probability in this experiment of getting zero hits? The answer is there's one of the four outcomes that has zero heads, so one fourth or 25%. What is the probability of getting one head? Well, there's two of the four outcomes that have one head, so two out of four, which is 50%. And what is the probability of getting two heads? There's one of the four outcomes that have two heads. So one out of four is 25%. This is a probability distribution. If we want to put this in a visual aid, we put our x values on the horizontal axis and our probability on the vertical. Zero heads would be 25%. One head would be 50% and two heads would be 25%. It's essentially a vertical bar chart to show the respective probabilities. Now, 
Sometimes we may want to calculate a cumulative probability. This is just the sum of the individual probabilities up to a particular value. If I want to know the cumulative probability of one head, then what I'm really saying is what is the probability of getting any x value up to that point, so 0 or 1. So we just sum the probabilities. It'd be 0.25 plus 0.5, which is 75%. If I want to know the cumulative probability of two heads, I would sum the probability of 0, 1, and 2, which would be 100%. Now go back and look at what we know to be true the probability of any particular x value occurring is greater than or equal to zero. And that's the case. And the sum of the probability of the events is equal to one. And that's correct. This plus this plus this equals one. We may want to calculate expected value, also known as the weighted mean of our discrete random variable. To do this, we use the following formula. We take each of our x values, like 0, we multiply it by its weight, which is the probability, 0.25, and then we add it to our next x value times its probability, 1 times 0.5, and then we add to that the next x value times its probability, 2 times 0.25. If you do that, you get 1. So the expected value of this probability distribution is 1. The expected value when you flip two coins is that you will get one head. That's what you expect. That's the one with the highest probability, so it makes sense. The variance in standard deviation can also be calculated for our probability distribution. To get the variance, we take each of our x values and find out how far they lie from the mean so x minus mu. We then square that and multiply it by the probability of each x value. And then we sum that result for each x value. For example, if we have this probability distribution, we take our 0 x value, subtract from that the mean, which is 1, square that difference, and multiply it by the probability of 0, which is 0.25. We then add to that the next x value, which is 1, subtract the mean, 1, square that value, and multiply it by the probability of 1, which is 0.5. And then we add to that our next x value, which is 2, subtract the mean, square that difference, and multiply it by the probability of 2, which is 0.25. If you do it correctly, you will get 0.5. If you want the standard deviation, then you find the square root of the variance, which is 0.71. Now let's do a more real world example. This says the US Census reports the following data on the number of people in households in the US for 2018. Based on the data and using Excel, complete the following. We want to calculate the expected number of people per household in the U.S., so the weighted mean. We want to calculate the standard deviation for the data, and we want to create a vertical bar chart to illustrate the discrete probability distribution. I've taken the data and put it in Excel. The first column shows the number of people per household. The next column shows the number of households. By the way, this data here is from the census and is in thousands. So this means that there are 44,038,000 households that have two people occupying them. Just add three zeros. Our next step is to find the expected value. And to do that, we go back to our formula. Remember, Excel doesn't have an expected value weighted mean formula, so we need to create it. We know that it is the sum of each x value times its probability. But well, we have the x values in our Excel. We don't have the probability, so we need to get those. First, find the total number of households. And you can do this by summing each of these cells. 
So there's 127,586,000 households. Next, let's find the probability of selecting a particular X value, a particular type of household. We take this value here, the number of households that have single members, and divide it by the total number of households. I want to lock this because I'm going to drag down the formula. So there is a 28% probability of getting a one-member household. There is a 34% probability of getting a two-member household, so on and so forth. Using our formula, we then take each x value and multiply it by the probability. x value times our probability. And we're going to do that for each of our x values. And once we've done that, we can then sum them all up. So we again use the sum function and just add these up. And if you do it correctly, you will get an expected value, weighted mean, of 2.46 members per household. The next step is to calculate the variance and standard deviation. To do this, we're going to use the formula here. We're going to take our x value, find out how far it is from our mean, which we just calculated, square that difference, and then multiply it by the probability. And then we will sum all of those up. So in the next column, we're going to create this portion equals our x value. Subtract from that the mean. I'm going to need to lock this because I want to drag it down. Okay. And if I do this correctly, I get the deviations from the mean, this. But then I want to square these. So in the next column, I'm going to put this and I'm going to square each of these. And I can go ahead and round those, make it a little more simple. And then I will drag that down. Okay. Of course, now I've got this portion here, but I need to take each of those and multiply them by the probabilities. So I'll take this and multiply it by the probability. Okay. Uh, yeah. And drag that down. And then finally, now that I've got all of this, I can sum them. And so I use again the, the sum function and I get, let's see what my variance is. 1.95. If I want the standard deviation, I would put the variance and then do the square root. And I get 1.39. Now the last thing we're asked to do is find a vertical bar chart, create one for our probabilities. And to do that, we're simply going to scroll over our x values and our probabilities. Go up here to insert, We've done this before. Uh, find the correct bar chart or vertical bar chart, click on it, and then get rid of the information that is unnecessary. And now we have our bar chart. Now, I always prefer the darker background, personal thing. Uh, I'm going to get rid of redundancies and I'm going to give this chart a title. And the title has to mirror the data. So this is probably best titled as number of persons per U.S. household. And we have our data now. Okay, let me make this a little bit better looking. And what we get is 28% of households have one member. Let's see, 34% of households have two members, 15% have three members. Does that match our data? 28%, 34%, 15 it does. So we are good. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have questions, let me know. Thanks.